first I have an important question. Um, what is good art for you? If it has something to do with some kind of truth, if it's like truthful, then it's good art. Mm -hmm. yeah. For people who don't know you um, yet, um, when did you decide to become an artist? So what, what was going on that you decided, I want to do that? Yeah, I, well, yeah, I just, just, uh, yeah, I think it's, you know, I, I just want, I, I, I applied for the art school and really hoped I would get in and then I could become an artist, it's just as fun as that. <laughs> okay, but can you uh, remember a moment in your childhood, maybe when you sat there drawing something and said, oh yeah, why not go into art school? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, my grandfather was an artist. And then my far my parents were in the theater, so I I remember I did one drawing when, where it was like, what do you want to be when you're when you grow up? And I wanted to be like a sculptor, like my grandfather. And yeah, it sort of always was there that I wanted to do, because I mean, once when you get to see this, like I got to see like you know my grandfather and all his cool artist friends, then you really think this is a nice world, you know, this is where I want to be. <laughs> But that was the main reason, so sitting around, enjoying the time with artists, drinking, smoking. You probably did, just seeing <laughs> it from afar, you know. But then, like now, we're in the modern age and, you know, all I do is, is emails. It's like, it's not so bohemian and, and, you know, cool as I thought it would be. Yeah. How does a day in your life look like? That's my next question. Yeah, I just sit on the computer and do emails and Excel files and... <laughs> And in my, in my spare time, I, I maybe draw, like, you know, it's almost like a hobby being an artist. <laughs> How much time do you have for that each day? Like? For, for, for doing art? For doing art. I kind of feel I never do art, you know. I never, I never do art, you know, during, like, working hours or something. Mm -hmm. It's just always... Mm -hmm. it almost, it, it, I think it almost has to have this feeling as being a hobby. You know, I just... Just like I always desire to do art, but I'm working on, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's also it's also like I mean, getting an idea is so easy. But then you know, just like the, this piece, the visitors like ah, it's an idea. But then you can imagine all the all the emails and excels you have to do to make this happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have to make a budget. You have to talk to everyone. And you have to you know rent the instruments and rent a rent and get a rent a car and. And you know, it's just, you know. It doesn't sound very romantic. No, but it is, I mean, because it's like all this stuff you're just doing it to create a moment. And then like the moment is like, gah, it's like, it's just, you know, it's just like Christmas, you know. You, you know, you, you, you really, you clean the house and put the decorations up and, and suddenly it's Christmas. Yeah. Can you explain our listeners a little bit about your exhibition here? What can people see here? Maybe you can explain a little bit about the visitors. Yeah, it is, uh, it is a piece that is like a nine channel video piece and it was, it was all shot uh, on the same moment in an old mansion in Rockaby, on Ro Rockaby Farm, upstate New York. And so it's, it's an old musician from, from the Reykjavik music scene. Mm -hmm. It's kind of my favorite musicians who are also, and it's, are very good friends of mine. And, and we just sing this kind of uh, opus about, the, you know, about nihilism and, mm -hmm. and femininity. Mm -hmm. Why femininity? That's, I mean, you're, you're a male artist. Yeah. Why are you so interested in it? Because, um, you know, it's just like the, the, the biggest change in the world, mm. like you know, it was like the big change of the 20th century. Suddenly, half of humanity had a voice, you know, and like the 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 the, the feminine aspect is just so much more interesting than the than the masculine aspect mm -hmm. of looking at life. Well, you you, you mentioned a, a very funny quote on the on the press conference. Can you can you repeat it? I've got it. It was like feminism and yeah yeah, yeah. I was I was saying that feminism and the blues are the are the most important things that happened in the in the 20th century. Why? Because feminism totally changed the world. In that half of half of humanity suddenly had rights and a voice, and mm -hmm. and the world, you know, is changing super significantly because of that. 
and then then the blues is the is the first the first global culture with you know the blues becomes rock and roll and rock and roll is the first thing that that tied the world together for real mm -hmm. and and turned the world into this global thing that it is now yeah. mm -hmm. Music is a big, important part of your work. Tonight uh, we are going to see a very interesting performance here, which brings together your art, Sigur Ros and the Boys Choir of Vienna. Yeah. Uh, can you explain um, us a little bit what can people expect here tonight? What is going to happen, and how did this? Um, how did you create this work? What inspired you for that? Yeah, it's a, it's it's good. It's an ex like it's an excerpt from the the visitors piece. It's a it's a part where where. Uh, where there's this uh, mantra, which is like, there are stars exploding and there's nothing you can do. And, and the, the Vienna Boys Choir is gonna sing that mantra. And then Kerten Sveinsson, who was the keyboard play player in Sigurros, as you mentioned, he, he uh, arranged it for the Vienna Boys Choir, also with the help of David Thor Jonsson, who is a great collaborator of mine. And, and yeah, and it's, it's just great to have the, the Vienna Boys choir as this, I mean, it's a great musical, musical force, and and you know, like also, it's like a, it's a, it's it's almost, you know, it's like almost so banal also, in in a in a in a in a you know in a, in a, because it's you know, I just did not almost realize that this is like a real institution that they exist for real, because it has always existed in my home <laughs> as this kind of. That's this unreal stuff from Vienna, like the Vienna Boys Choir. Mm -hmm. like. Well, you have been quite obsessed with the Boys Choir of Vienna. You have been collecting records yeah, for yeah. years. Yeah, and... yeah, I have a lot of records with them. How many? I have, I have, I think, like eight records with them. It's not so many, but it's like, I mean, it's quite many. How did you get in touch with them? I mean, that's not very... I mean, you're from Iceland. And when did you discover them? And... Yeah, just like, you know, no, everybody in Iceland has... The, the Vienna Boys Choir and the record collection. You know, it's for Christmas. <laughs> you always put it on. So it's like in my, in my family's record collection always. Yeah. And Can you remember a special song which you used to hear when you were a kid? Yeah, I, yeah, I remember like, there was this record which is like songs from the Vienna Woods. And it was like, oh, the liebe Augustin, August. Very simple, you know. But then there was always a, a soup. There's, but in Iceland, like, Oh, to liberal Augustin is like this really, really dirty rhyme. Really? Yeah. It has, you know, the, the, the Icelandic lyrics to it are like super dirty. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, oh my God, why are they singing this? What, uh, what does it uh, mean in, in Icelandic language? I cannot say that. Oh, you can. It's totally disgusting. Really? Do it. It's like... <laughs> no. Say it. Now you have to. No. Please. <laughs> it's... Um, fuck Jorun, that whore in, in the ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you will not put that under it. <laughs> but it's okay. for some reason like all kids know that. Mm -hmm. Like Otili Braukus in that horrible, with that horrible lyric. Great. <laughs> I thought they were singing that. So it was sort of like, um, let's uh, switch back to the serious interview. Yeah. Uh, so it was like a sort of a dream coming true that you collaborated with them. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, and it was fantastic because it was also like, uh, then like, that we were planning a performance and then suddenly it comes to this, like, ah, what could you do? And then almost like Daniela drops it like a joke. Like, and then we could, you know, have talked to this Sanger club and, and I just freaked out. That's the, the best idea ever. So it was... The idea was here, like the, Daniela, the curator here, she got this idea to do the collaboration. And did you have a chance? I, could, I would not, not even have dared to dream it because I, yeah. I thought they didn't exist for real. <laughs> then they are there. <laughs> then they are. <laughs> uh, did you have some time to hang ar um, a little around with the guys, talk to them? Um... Actually, because I, m my plane got stuck yesterday because of a blizzard in Iceland. <laughs> So, but Kertan and David, they, they came before, so they, they were hanging out with the boys, and I'm really jealous. But I'm gonna hang out with them in the afternoon. For the party? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, are you going to, to let you, uh, your record sign? Do they have to sign them? I, I was gonna 
take it, but I thought like I have to get yeah, I should go and get a new record because I thought it was like ridiculous to like let them sign a record which you know is from the nine but I should have had it was like sure. like a nineteen sixties Sanga Knabin is the same as the Sanga Knabin today, it's like an eternal band. That's not that's true. They're like the Simpsons, you know. <laughs> Sanger Knabin. Yeah, they're like always they're always the same. You know that this will be uh, the headline of the story <laughs> on the website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, just a few last questions. What was the best exhibition that you have ever seen in your life? Well, uh, Can you remember one? Oh, it's so boring. No, I don't. Rem no, it is. Seen so many goods. It's like it's like the most boring answer. Like no, there are so many good exhibitions. You cannot take one. I mean. Uh, <laughs> and let's make it easier for you. Um, your favorite musicians. So you mentioned your record collection. Yeah. What else can I find in your collection? Okay, but I can very easily say the greatest gig I ever saw. Oh, great! That was Prince, <laughs> and it's just I've never seen, like I've never realized that we humans are capable of being so. It was like the Übermensch to see to see Prince live. When was that? It was like three years ago. I was in the O2 Arena in London, and it was just unbelievable. I lost, you know, power in my limbs, and I cried. But I'm not like a big Prince fan. I mean, I have, I have more records with the We in a Boys Choir than Prince. But, but, he was just so great. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, what did he sing there? Which songs? Old like, stuff or new ones? Yeah, mo mo mostly like all the greats, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, what's your favorite Prince song? I mean, it's very basic. I think it's just Purple Rain. You know. <laughs> Can you sing it now for me? Yeah. I don't want to cause you any sorrow. I don't want to cause you any pain. I only want to see you laughing in the purple rain. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine, like, yeah, and we we were we. We were standing pretty close by him, and he was like turning in our direction, doing the guitar solo. And then I lost power in my limbs. Just like, ah, blackout. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, my last question. If you could change uh, three things in this world, what would they be? Yeah, I think they would be... I think they would be, yeah, like, yeah. I think, you know, mainly like, yeah, give, what was the song, what was that? Yeah, w women of the world, please take over, because if you don't, the world's gonna end, and it's gonna happen soon, yeah. Thank you for yeah. the interview. <laughs>